let me show you exactly how to grow your blog to the next level with the latest advancements in AI. More importantly, I'm going to show you the crucial mistakes that you might make and the huge opportunities that there are that you might not be aware of. But before we move on, make sure to sign up to my free blogging masterclass by clicking the link below. Let's get started. So first, let's talk about what the AI or artificial intelligence cannot do. So what I have noticed in the past is that there are tons of these over-promising tutorials, courses, and products that claim that you can write blog posts like five times faster or that you can make a blog post rank high with a secret prompt or a secret prompting strategy or whatever. And basically, all of these guides are complete BS. So to set some realistic expectations as to what the AI can and cannot do, let's talk about the issues at first. So first and foremost, what the AI cannot do is write a blog post. And this is simply how it is at the moment. For sure, in the future, AI could write better blog posts than today, and it probably will. But today, the AI is not even close to be able to produce a piece of content that would actually rank high on Google and other search engine results pages. So whenever you see a video that promises like, here's a prompt that I use to generate 15 blog posts in five seconds or whatever, you already know what's going to happen. If this is how the world worked, Google and other search engine results pages would be flooded with useless content that is generated with AI. But apparently that is not the case. So the issue is that the AI tools such as ChatGPT or other similar technologies is that these tools only write content that is already out there on the internet. They are not generating anything new because these tools are not capable of thinking the way humans do. They don't roam around the world, they don't join communities, and they really don't understand the nuances that a human writer can insert into these blog posts. So basically what these AI tools do is they just write this lengthy wall of text that uses fancy words and basically adds absolutely nothing to the internet. And for a blog post to rank high, it should always add something new to the table. And by the way, I'm not just making this stuff up because I have actually experimented with ChatGPT for almost a year now. So I basically ran this experiment where I put together this AI-powered website in a week or so, and the site is performing terribly. Even though I did some manual tweaking to the blog posts, and even though I knew that these kind of blog posts are actually good topics that have ranked in the past on another website of mine, yet it still failed completely. So this AI-powered website is basically getting no traffic at all. And yes, somebody could say that this is a very new website and it might start ranking in the future. But how about this? I have actually launched another website where I have only written blog posts by my hand instead of using ChatGPT. And the site is only three months old, so twice as young as this ChatGPT website. And it has a similar amount of content. And here you can see the performance of this website. So this handwritten traditional blog has already 500 plus visitors a day, and it's just three months of age. You can only imagine what this data looks like in six months. So this clearly demonstrates the issue with ChatGPT. It can generate content, but it cannot write blog posts from A to Z. Not even close. So the point I'm trying to prove here is that you shouldn't really expect that much from AI tools like ChatGPT or basically any other similar pieces of software. At most, I can save like 5% of my time when using AI tools like ChatGPT or Grammarly or whatever. There are also different types of content that ChatGPT simply cannot have any input on. So consider something like reviews. For example, if you are reviewing a pair of tennis shoes, how on earth could you write a blog post about tennis shoes with ChatGPT? ChatGPT cannot go there and play with your new shoes or it cannot really test those. ChatGPT or other AI tools can only read the landing page of those shoes, but they cannot deliver any value to those blog posts because they cannot try those shoes as humans can. So if you wanted to make that kind of piece of content rank high, 
you should actually try those shoes out in different court types and contexts such as in rainy conditions or winter conditions or whatever you can imagine. But nonetheless, the point is that you cannot use ChatGPT basically to do anything in that kind of context. Now, the next thing AI cannot do is SEO. So first and foremost, my blogging strategy in the past has been pretty much SEO free. So I have written a ton of blog posts, more like I would say 1000 plus blog posts during the past three years. And I have gotten millions and millions of reads to those. And I have basically never done any SEO. I don't build backlinks. I don't do keyword placement. I don't pay for any SEO tools or whatever. So basically I just focus on writing content that solves problems for people in my niche. So what you can see today is that there are lots of AI SEO videos that will claim that you will like 10 X your output and get millions of visitors to your blog posts by using ChatGPT strategically by asking it to write an SEO optimized piece of content that is flooded with keywords and all this kind of stuff that would apparently make the blog post rank high. But that is complete BS. So you cannot do SEO with ChatGPT, period. All you really need to do to rank high on Google is to provide unique and original content that provides value for people in your target niche. In other words, you want to write a blog post as a human for humans. There are no longer those optimization strategies you could use. And you definitely cannot do that with AI because you can't really do that without AI either. Even if ChatGPT or other AI tools could write a piece of content that would rank high on Google or other search engine results pages, there would still be a ton of issues you might encounter. For example, ChatGPT might actually plagiarize content from other content creators. And that is a big issue because it's basically impossible to tell if your content is original, if you haven't written it off the top of your head. And then there's the issue with factual incorrectnesses. So if you ask ChatGPT to generate a blog post or basically just to answer a question about something more specific, basically what I mean by that is like anything other than what is a cat or what is a dog or what is the distance to the moon, it is going to make a ton of silly assumptions and it is basically assuming that it's always right and it's making a ton of silly mistakes and factual incorrectnesses, or at least it's going to say things in a way that is not that helpful for people that are reading through those answers or blog posts. And while I was trying and experimenting with ChatGPT, I found that these mistakes were really, really hard to detect, even as somebody who wrote about things that I was very, very well familiar with. So basically what I did was ask ChatGPT to write blog posts about coding and it really wrote decent pieces of content and the code was mostly right but some of the things it said were really hard to detect if they were factually right or wrong and what actually ended up happening was that to just spot those couple of silly mistakes that ChatGPT made I actually had to spend more time on writing those blog posts and proofreading them than I would have had to had I just written those from scratch without AI. Now before I show you how to use AI to write blog posts and to streamline your workflow, it is good to keep in mind how Google actually works and what kind of content ranks high on Google these days. So basically as I hinted before in this video already, Google appreciates original and unique pieces of content that always add to the internet. So you need to add something new to the table. You can't just go ahead and repeat what your competitors have already said. This used to work in the past and probably still works to at least some degree, but it's going to work less and less as time goes by and as Google's algorithms become better and better at detecting whether a piece of content is actually a useful read or not. So what I'm trying to say here is that every single blog post needs to show your expertise and experience and it needs to be formatted nicely. It needs to have headings and subheadings and tables and images and bulleted lists and numbered lists and useful links. And basically it needs to be a comprehensive package 
not just a wall of text. And the issue with AI written content is that it is simply not going to rank on Google because it looks mass produced. It doesn't do anything that I just mentioned. So with AI, you cannot generate actually useful images. You can for sure generate stock footage, but that's never going to cut it. And I have actually made a separate video about that topic. So make sure to check that out if you're interested. But nonetheless, ChatGPT can only generate text. And basically it can do some headings, subheadings and structuring and also leave some links, but it doesn't really do that that well in my experience. And now you might be wondering as to whether Google has an AI detector to not rank content that is written with AI. Well, if my memory serves me correct, I think Google stated that it doesn't really matter how you get there, as long as the content is original and unique and valuable, it might rank on Google. But the issue is that the AI written content is basically just so bad that Google's built-in mechanism is already strong enough to detect that that kind of content should never be placed on top of the Google search results. And this is why basically most of the AI written blog posts will never rank on Google. Not because Google used some AI detector, but instead just because the content is so, so bad. Now there's one more thing that I wanna talk about when using AI to write blog posts, and it is called prompt engineering. So first and foremost, what is prompt engineering? Well, it's the idea of crafting a specific input for tools like ChatGPT to produce a better output. So this is once more one of these myths that you're going to see online. So basically you can see those prompt engineering courses and prompt engineering tutorials and those super long ChatGPT inputs that are prompt engineered to produce a useful and unique piece of content that would rank high on Google. Let's say that you're somebody who has never tried AI and you wanted to ask ChatGPT or any other similar AI tool to write a piece of content right now. What you would basically do is just ask like, hey ChatGPT, can you generate a blog post about this golf? Now ChatGPT will spit out an output that is, let's say, 2 out of 10 when it comes to content quality. Now if you were really good at prompt engineering and you would be able to write a very descriptive and very specific input for ChatGPT to generate a better output that would have a better chance to rank high on Google, you would probably be able to generate a piece of content that is like 3 out of 10 or even 4 out of 10 when it comes to content quality. But if you want to rank high on Google, your content should be like 9 out of 10 or 10 out of 10. And that's the issue. And basically in these tutorials that you're going to see these days, you're going to get an impression that if you're a first time user of ChatGPT, you can write very bad prompts that will only write blog posts that will never rank, like two out of 10 quality. But then if you, if you become this like an expert prompt engineer, you can all of a sudden write blog posts that are going to rank high on Google. No, 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 not at all. So it's basically giving you some slight advantage over people that have never used AI, but if you become a good prompt engineer, that is basically not going to make any difference as to how you should approach blogging in the first place. So forget about those tutorials right off the bat. And here you can actually see an example. So here's a basic blog post that I just wrote with ChatGPT's AI about this golf. This prompt that I used right here is basically just a short message that I sent to ChatGPT to write a blog post about what is this golf. Now let's compare this output to a more specific and well-crafted prompt that I sent ChatGPT with much greater details about what I want to accomplish with this blog post. Now, even without reading the output, you can already tell that it's basically just the same piece of content that the previous output was. It is just a wall of text that repeats stuff that's already on the internet. So to put it all together, if you want to rank high on Google, you need to provide value. Here's a blog post that I wrote with ChatGPT. It is just a wall of text with long bulleted lists. Nobody will read this kind of stuff anymore these days. And then here's a blog post that I wrote by hand without using AI at all. And as you can see, there's a short paragraph followed by an image. Then there's just a short sentence followed by another image. Then there are a couple of sentences 
and then another image or a bulleted list and table or whatever. So you get the idea. The content needs to be highly visual these days. And those images can't just be some stock footage, but those need to be something that actually deliver the message. And this is the type of content that AI tools like ChatGPT cannot generate. Not even close. Well, now that I have shown you how not to use AI and what are, what are the biggest issues with AI today, let me show you how to actually use it to your advantage. First and foremost, let me show you what AI-powered tools I'm using in my everyday content creation workflow to streamline my process by a bit. So the first tool, this is not so obvious fun, but it's Google Search. So basically, to find amazing blog post topic ideas, I can use Google Search because the auto completion feature shows you these suggestions that are basically great blog post topics related to a particular topic. And these suggestions are AI powered. So once you start typing something into Google, it predicts what are the next words that you're about to type using the AI algorithms that they have been developing for decades now. These suggestions not only show you what are the most likely words that you're going to input next, but it also shows you what are the topics that people in your niche are actually searching for. And I have actually made a separate video about keyword research, and I have left a link to it in the description, so make sure to watch it. But for now, it's just good enough to know that you can use AI this way to find blog post topics. Now, the next tool that I have used all the time as a blogger and content creator for the past three years is the free version of Grammarly. So basically what Grammarly is, is that it's an AI powered writing service that allows you to automatically fix grammatical issues, typos, and correct your style in your blog posts without you having to pay attention to it. And the way Grammarly works is that there's a Chrome extension you should definitely install. And that way, wherever you write, as long as you're using Chrome, Grammarly will analyze your content and highlight those issues that appear in your text. And basically all you need to do is just to click those highlighted issues and those will be automatically fixed for you. And I have found that about 99% of the time, or at least 95% of the time, those fixes are very good and spot on. But of course, sometimes it also makes silly mistakes. So you still need to be a bit careful with that. But that being said, I must admit that I have never really understood all the grammatical rules and for example, for example, when to use commas in English. And for this, Grammarly has been awesome because I don't really need to worry about that stuff. Now the next tool in line is the obvious one and I have talked about it already in this very tutorial. So that is ChatGPT. Now the way I use ChatGPT is quite complicated and I will show you exactly how I do it in just a bit. So let me just finish the list of tools that I'm using and then let's focus on ChatGPT a bit more. Now the next tool in line is Stock Photos Upscaler. And basically what this tool does is that it takes a low resolution image and turns it into a higher resolution one. So if you have a ton of images with bad resolution, you can try to use the Stock Photos Upscaler to scale those images up to make them look more nice in your blog posts. And last but not least, you can try out tools like Night Cafe, Mid Journey, or Deep Dream Generator to generate awesome stock footage to your blog posts. But just keep in mind that adding a ton of stock footage to your blog post is not going to cut it. So I would estimate that about 95% of the images that I use are actually useful illustrations and visualizations that support the learning and delivering my message in my blog posts. And only 5% of them are images that I have chosen from Unsplash or Pexels, or even used some AI tools like Midjourney or Deep Dream Generator. Let's take a closer look at how you can actually use ChatGPT in your blog post workflow and how I have used it to generate content a bit faster. So first and foremost, my favorite use case for ChatGPT is to simplify overly complex terms and overly complicated sentences. So basically, what I sometimes tend to do is I try to over-explain or over-complicate things accidentally. So if I'm trying to explain something simple, I might actually make it very, very hard to understand. And if I notice this, 
I can actually ask ChatGPT to rephrase that piece of content into a more compact and concise and understandable piece of text that is accessible to everybody. And you don't need a specific prompt for this purpose or any other purpose in this guide, but basically you just need to use your common sense. So just ask ChatGPT to, let's say, simplify this piece of text for an eighth grader or such. Then the next use case that I have really found ChatGPT funny is to turn words into emojis. So what you can do is basically, especially if you have a younger audience, you can ask ChatGPT to assign an emoji to a word. So let's say that I'm writing a review and I have a table that lists some of the attributes of the tools. I can actually ask ChatGPT to assign an emoji to each of those attributes. And this will actually make my blog post look a bit nicer and give some life to it. Now, the next strategy I use with ChatGPT is to ask it to ask questions from me. And I have actually used this example in my past videos, but once I was writing a blog post about how to do keyword research, I had a problem. And that was that I had been using this strategy for three years straight every single day. So I wasn't really sure what to include into that blog post because I really didn't know what the beginners could not understand or what the beginners would have asked me about that topic. So instead of like arranging an interview or a meeting with a bunch of people or looking for information online, what I actually did was ask ChatGPT to ask questions from me as a beginner from an expert that it would like to know about that topic if it were to learn that from A to Z. And that way I was actually able to get a really nice long list of questions from which I could formulate this really nice blog post that would answer the question of how to do keyword research and then the next use case for ChatGPT is to turn your notes into a blog post section. So for example, let's say that you're writing a review blog post about a pair of shoes and you have taken this long list of notes about using those shoes in different scenarios and contexts and whatever. Now what you might want to do is just input that long list of notes that you have taken and ask ChatGPT to turn those into short and concise blog post sections. Although the problem here is that ChatGPT might still add some jargon to it, and I really don't do this anymore. But I think that I wrote like 10 or 20 blog posts with this strategy, and those blog posts are doing decently in the Google search results. So basically, ChatGPT is not like adding anything new to the table by doing this, but it's just making those notes look like a more professional piece of content rather than those informal notes that you have taken. So in some topics, this might be a very great strategy, to turn your ideas into blog posts. But just remember to make sure that the content is accurate and that ChatGPT did not add anything useless into the mix. And now the next way to use ChatGPT is to do translations. And once again, you can't just trust ChatGPT to do a translation from A to C perfectly. But what you can do instead is to take your blog post, ask ChatGPT to translate it to another language and then do some proofreading and editing as necessary. Now that you know how to use AI in your blog posts, the next logical question is what kind of content should you produce if you want to stand strong and have a good chances to rank high in the day and age of AI? The issue with AI is that it cannot really generate content that would rank high on Google or other search engines as is. And my hot take is that the introduction of tools like ChatGPT is actually making blogging a bit easier because there's a bunch of people that are jumping out from the train and they're trying to use those ChatGPT-like tools as shortcuts to success and they will only fail. They'll, their blog posts will never rank high on Google. But one thing that I want to mention is that you should avoid writing pieces of content that the AI can do. So think about a topic like what is a cat? That is a silly blog post idea because there are like millions of blog posts already that are explaining what is a cat. This type of a topic is something that the AI could write a perfect answer to. And in the future, we might see that Google actually does this. So whenever you type in like, what is a cat into Google, it might just give you an AI generated 
description of a cat with an AI generated image of a cat. And this is called commodity content. So it's that type of stuff that has already been there on the internet for 30 plus years. And it's basically something that there's so much competition to that you would never have any chances for ranking high with that kind of topics, no matter whether you used AI or not. So that's just one tip that I wanted to give you. So don't write content that the AI could do as good job as you. Thank you so much for watching the video and I hope to see you in the next one. Have a good day.